Welcome to Game Theory 101, an introduction to duopolistic competition. This is the first in a series of lectures on how two firms compete with one another to extract as much value as possible. As the title is hinting at, this is an offshoot of my traditional Game Theory 101 course. Why is it that we think of duopolistic competition in terms of game theory? Well, I want you to think about competition more broadly, on a spectrum. On one end of that spectrum, we have perfect competition. Here, there are so many firms, each with such a small share of market power, that changes to what one firm does is not going to cause a change in what other firms want to do. We think about these sorts of situations as being relatively astrategic. There's no feedback loop here. If you change what you're doing, you're not going to cause a change to what others are doing, which is not going to feed back to you and maybe cause a change to what you want to do. On the other end of the spectrum, we have monopoly. Here, we're also seeing a lack of strategy. The monopolist doesn't have to think about how its choice is going to impact other firms' decisions, precisely because those other firms do not exist. In your traditional introduction to microeconomics classes, you tend to focus on these two extremes. The reason being is that they're relatively straightforward. That lack of strategy makes them easy to analyze. In the middle, we run into trouble. Take duopoly. That prefix duo means two, so there are two firms competing with one another here. When you have two firms and just two firms, each has a substantial share of market power. So much so that what one firm is choosing to do is going to impact what another firm wants to do. And that might cause that feedback loop. If we're changing what the second firm is doing, that might change what the first firm wants to do. There's strategy involved here. This is more complicated. Duopolies are a special case of something more generally described as oligopoly. That's anything between monopoly and perfect competition. We're going to be focusing on duopolies in this course for a few reasons. One is that they are relatively easy to analyze. When you only have two actors moving around, there's generally going to be just two things to solve for rather than n number of things to solve for with n firms running around. Another reason to study duopolies is that the types of things that we could learn about oligopolies are going to be present in duopolies. So just because it's easier doesn't mean we're losing a lot of stuff there. We're actually getting a lot of what we would learn with oligopolies by just looking at two firms. And in fact, I'll highlight this as we're going through this course, even though, again, we're focusing on duopolies. The last reason is that if you're taking a microeconomics sequence, that would be an upper division set of classes on microeconomics, those courses are going to by and large have problems with duopolies. So if you're viewing this as a means of trying to get help on homework problems, it'll be most useful for focusing on the duopoly case. Okay, so we're focusing on duopolies. How do we study duopolistic competition? Well, I've been alluding to the fact that we're going to use game theory to do this. The reason, as I have said, is that we have strategic interdependence. Each actor's actions affect both its own outcome and the other's outcome. The firms are in a strategically interdependent world. If we need a way to study interdependence, I have good news for you. Game theory was developed just for that purpose. So that's why we are going to be using game theory to analyze these duopolistic competition scenarios. This does, of course, mean that we have some sort of prerequisites for this class. Specifically, it's going to be two. One is having some pre-existing knowledge of game theory. So if you have taken an introduction class to game theory, you're probably good enough. If you haven't, you can check Game Theory 101 up through repeated games. I'll leave a note in the description of this video to allow you access to that course. The other thing that you need in order to actually appreciate what's going on is calculus, specifically multivariate calculus. The reason for that is that by and large, what we're doing is trying to optimize utility functions. We have two different firms out there. They're each going to choose something, perhaps how much to produce. And so what we need to do is optimize those utility functions and the way that you optimize utility functions is through calculus. So you need to know calculus to be able to appreciate fully what's going on here. All right, well, what are we actually covering substantively? We're gonna cover five different types of competition 
And what is going to distinguish each of these cases is what they're actually choosing. So in the first case, we're going to study the quantity of goods produced. You can think about this in a couple of different ways. A simultaneous decision where both firms are simultaneously choosing how much to produce. This is called Cournot competition. Or you can think about it as a sequential action where one firm, a industry leader, is choosing how much to produce. And then after that, a second firm is choosing how much to produce. This is often called Stackelberg competition. And one of the sub-themes that you will see in this course is that economists love naming things after people. Another type of competition is on how much to price a good. This is called Bertrand competition. A third type of competition is how much effort to produce. How much should each of these firms work toward producing some sort of value? Those are called contests, and specifically we're gonna look at a particular type of contest known as the Tulloch contest model. Fourth type of competition is timing, when to release a product, for example. And that's called a duel. The last type of competition is spatial competition, where to locate your firm or your product or your idea. This is also described as hoteling competition. So five different types of competition and lots of different things to learn internally with each of these different types. So I hope you're looking forward to it and I hope you enjoyed this lecture and I hope to see you next time. Take care.